Unpopular opinion. I think mainstream medicine knows about treatments outside of big pharma that are potentially as effective as pharmaceutical medicine that they are not pursuing or interested in. Now, whether you see the fact that pesticides like DDT were banned in Europe before they were in America, or that certain pharmaceuticals have been banned in Europe before they're banned in America, or even that certain practices like directly advertising pharmaceuticals on TV is often not legal in other countries, like in many cases in Europe, it should really make you pause and wonder. So from my point of view, having been the sick patient myself, I think these are important things that you know. I feel an obligation to share with you. So let's jump in. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. Let's get in here. Now, one of the main reasons I became a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and not a medical doctor, when in reality, from childhood, I always had a passion for medicine. It just seemed obvious to me that I would go into the field of integrative medicine. And yet my own healing journey is what really prompted me to go into a very diverse divergent path that's maybe not taken as seriously and not as respected, but has unbelievable amount of gems and wisdom, which is a part of my mission here. But it was through getting sick that I understood that how is it possible that my Ivy League trained GI specialist didn't recommend these simple herbal formulas from traditional Chinese medicine that clinically work and are clinically studied and helped me more than anything he offered me. And why is it that he did not recommend that I do that before getting a colonoscopy, being put on antidepressants for my GI issues, or potentially even needing surgery. How crazy is that? That he didn't recommend some of these other options before extremely invasive options is ridiculous. And that's a part of my mission here to share that there are alternatives that work. Now let's talk about natural treatment and condition number one, clinical anxiety or clinical depression. There is a belief that if you have clinical anxiety and clinical depression, you need just pharmaceutical medicine because antidepressants are the only things that can treat it. Now, while I absolutely agree that clinical anxiety and clinical depression, they are physiological issues. There is a chemical imbalance without a question there. But there's a superstitious faith that antidepressants are the only thing that can treat that. Take a look at this on the studies on antidepressants. In this particular research paper, it's called Are Antidepressants Effective? A debate on their efficacy. And this paper in particular mentions something here that says, recently the efficacy of antidepressants, a treatment used by 11% of US American adults has been debated. And it goes on. Studies have found that antidepressant effects to be unspecific and mainly resulting from placebo. Some study, okay? Now the effect of antidepressants may also be overestimated due to selective publishing and selection of patients who have a high chance of response. Studies have also shown that the drugs do not reduce suicidal events when compared to placebo and efficacy differences to placebo are often too small to prove clinical relevance. So I find that some people antidepressants do help. Some people have to discontinue them due to side effects. And some people, the benefit is no different from the placebo. Now this is actually, for anyone looking into the actual research on antidepressants, this is well known in medicine. There are lots of psychiatrists and oncologist friends that I have that refuse to prescribe antidepressants because of this sort of mixed efficacy. Now I'm not saying they don't help people. They absolutely can. That is the difference between life or death, getting out of bed and existing for one more day versus not. But I want you to take a look at Julie's case study right here. Because because she was one of the patients of mine that we talked about. Her doctor wanted her to be on Xanax and antidepressants, and we treated just as effectively with high-dose traditional herbal formulas. You know, my internist gave me dietary recommendations, mm -hmm. you know, which is understandable, but, um, you know, his fix was going on a medication called omeprazole, and I took it for about two weeks. And then the situation would subside, but the problem was it just kept coming back. So in regards to the treatment of the anxiety and more of like the adrenal fatigue, mm -hmm. what were they recommending? He did give me like Xanax, like a benzodiazepine, mm -hmm. right, to use if I needed to, which is not my first choice. Now at this point, would you agree with the advice your traditional medical providers gave to you regarding medication for this condition? I absolutely do not agree with some of the ways that my internist recommends handling gastric issues or even anxiety because the pharmaceutical way of handling these you know altering the acid that's happening within the stomach depending on which way you're trying to angle it it, it doesn't correct the problem it's like you're going to have to take this medication for life and it's not even the best way to approach it so i love that the Chinese medicine actually goes in to heal whatever is wrong. And then after I stopped the formulas, I really haven't had to go back on them. So it's like not something that I've had to continue to take. It's like the body is healed and now the body manages just fine. It's almost just like the formulas just needed to 
correct what was ever wrong, whatever damage had been done. And then it's like kind of allowing the body to heal itself and then it's like ready to go. Some of these alternative therapeutic options I also have as part of my free guide. Four DV rituals, healing rituals that could potentially help you add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. It's a link right below this video and we go into some, in this case, daily lifestyle practices and rituals. They are some that can help, they won't necessarily reverse this, but it's worth checking out that free guide. Natural treatment number two and issue number two, which is acid reflux. In terms of sheer volume, this is probably the number one issue that people come into my clinic with. You know, it's multifaceted, the reasons why people have so much reflux and indigestion these days. But in general, I'm sometimes shocked by how long people are on PPIs, a certain class of medication used. For example, there are some concerns with this medication. Check this out. In this particular trial, this paper is from the JAMA Network and Journal of American Medical Association talks about the association of proton pump inhibitors with the risk of dementia. And the researchers said they found that patients receiving regular PPI medication had a significantly increased risk of dementia compared with patients not on the medication. Now, there's a severity of acid reflux that absolutely a healthy lifestyle and healthy diet will not 100% reverse. I see it in my clinic every single day. For a lot of people, a healthy diet and healthy lifestyle will reverse acid reflux, indigestion, GERD. But go back to Julie's case study for one minute because while she had anxiety, one of the main conditions she came in with that was the most concerning, which was severe GERD and acid reflux. And she was put on a medication for her reflux for a very long period of time. On a month, it would all come back when she would stop. So on, it's better, off, it comes back. There was really no cure or really no solution. And I want to flash back to her story so you can see exactly what she said after taking the formulas for about one to three months. I was most impressed because I would have all these reactions, like an on, adult onset like uh, intolerance, let's say, to like bell peppers and like the, the most bizarre foods. And it was like, I, I knew it worked because at one point I had some meal that had bell peppers in it and I was like, oh, darn it, I'm gonna get like acid reflux and I got none of it. And I was like, okay, this not only works, but it's actually like healed and changed my system. So surprisingly, I'm able to eat, you know, anything I want. I can drink all the coffee I want. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love my coffee. You know, without any type of acid reflux. But after going through that, I could just tell, like my system just felt better. I wasn't having those types of reactions. I could eat those foods and not have that type of, you know, gastric acid reflux. Mm. And so everything felt better. My digestion was better. And then of course it started to correct, you know, my energy because all of a sudden my system's actually digesting and absorbing sure. all of these nutrients. And then when I get more sleep, when I got better sleep, it's like, then I can think better. So it's like, once you start to heal one part of the body, it just starts to affect the other parts of the body and the, you know, the whole organism is just like working in concert with itself. So anxiety and depression, acid reflux, GI issues, some of the most commonly heavily medicated conditions that I see in my clinic every single day. By the way, I work with a limited number of new patients every single month in my practice in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. So if you guys wanna learn no more about working with me, check out the link and the info to my clinic below. You can just call that number or book. And also you can go to dralexheim.com forward slash clinic. The third issue and condition is really menstrual issues, gynecological issues. And the main thing here utilized is birth control. So I see lots of women coming in on birth control. It is an epidemic. For basically any issue, anxiety, irregular menses, painful menses, women are put on birth control and often they're put on birth control very young. I don't think there's anything 100% wrong with utilizing hormonal birth control, but there are lots of documented potential side effects. And also, some women when they stop their birth control and they want to get pregnant, have a hard time doing so. Now, I've seen TCM formulas for gynecological conditions do just about more miracles than any condition I've seen. And it's very interesting because I've had women come in with rare blood clotting disorders where their gynecologist said you'll never be able to get pregnant without blood thinners and they got pregnant for the first time on my formulas. I've seen women who've really never had more than one cycle per year since the onset of their menstrual cycle have one menstrual cycle a month for a year after taking Chinese formulas for one to two years. And I've seen people who are told they would never get pregnant because of insert XYZ condition get pregnant on traditional Chinese medicine formulas. And at one point in Japan about 90% of gynecologists 
were actually using TCM formulas as part of their practice because of the documented efficacy. But don't take my word for it. Watch this recent case study of a patient, Alyssa, that I highlighted here, who was told that her precancerous condition was showing two thirds of her cervix had precancerous cells, which is strongly correlated with potentially developing genital urinary cancer later in life. And after taking one of my formulas for four months, her pap smear came back 100% clear and her career gynecologist said he had never seen that ever in his life and never that fast. Check this out. So Alyssa, tell me a bit about what life was like before. Sort of paint us the picture. In other words, what was going on and the traditional medical providers you'd seen, what was basically their recommendation? I had two abnormal pap smears just okay. at my regular appointments um, yearly. Mm -hmm. So I guess after the second one, um, it's a little bit of a red flag. So I was sent to get a cervical biopsy to find out what was causing the abnormality. And then the biopsy came back with cervical intraepithelial dysplasia. So basically, um, precancerous sells it with stage two to three, I believe. Um, so it's pretty significant. scary. The doctor at the time recommended a series of things that were all in my opinion, really aggressive and abrasive treatment options. One was a cervical biopsy and one was some kind of laser electrosurge. After sure. I asked him if it would impact fertility or um, reproductibility, he said, well, first of all, he said it's not even guaranteed to work because I guess they wow. excise the abnormal cells, the abnormal tissue in your cervix. And then with every time they do the procedure, there's a 30% uh, chance of decrease that you'll be able to carry each time. And he said it's not guaranteed it would work the first time, like they remove the abnormal cells and then wow. it, it may come back. I left really uh, kind of shaken after that appointment. I remember talking to you about it and you said, you know, you probably won't see anything before six months of doing your due diligence and taking this regularly. And I scheduled, that same doctor scheduled me for an endocervical curatage, supposedly thinking that we were going to schedule that procedure, but I just wanted to see if it had cleared. That was about five months after I met with you and it came back completely negative. There was no cellular dysplasia. What did the physician you saw say? He was in complete disbelief at the results. He was shocked. I remember getting a phone call and him saying he wants me to come in just to talk about it. And he asked, honestly, he said, I've never seen it happen with a woman, you know, your age with how severe that dysplasia was. I appreciated that he was open to learning about it. Um, yeah. The sad part is no alternatives were offered. So I'm lucky that I was pointed nice. in your direction, but for those other women, you know, if even if this video helps one, then yeah. I did my job. Now the bottom line for me sharing this is simple. It's not that medications are bad or that you shouldn't take them. It's that I wish I knew when I was the sick person that there are other less invasive options that clinically work, are studied, and are safe that your physician will never ever ever recommend because they just don't know about them. They're told that there are no other options and they have a superstitious faith in pharmaceuticals over some other options. But it is my obligation to share with you so that you know there are other options that can help you. And I've shared just two or three here in this video. And I wish I had known, and so many of my patients wish they had known before getting irreversible surgeries that there was another option and there's an alternative. So some food for thought here today in this video, guys. If you're interested in some of these healing modalities and how to apply it in your own life without seeing me, I've launched a brand new online program, Introduction to Healing with Traditional Chinese Medicine. There's a link right below this video to this whole healing library of online courses I'm releasing on how to heal yourself with traditional Chinese medicine. We're focusing on very specific conditions going forward. So if that's appealing to you, check it out it's a great beginner course and rather filling these videos with sponsors and ads that are not related to what you want to learn about you know bs supplements that kind of thing i figure why not create something that can create lasting change so check it out below and before you go i have another related video on some of these exact same topics right here